All right, we're back with more ignition coil testing. This time we have one of the pencil style coils. It's a Bosch coil used on Volkswagen. Uh, it's got the electronics built into the head of the coil, so all you have to do is give a TTL, uh, 12 volts ground, and you get the uh, output voltage here, the high tension current uh, voltage. We're using the same rig that we've used for other videos, testing the Yukon coil. You can go back and look at those videos on LS2 and the Yukon. But basically, we have a current transformer. We have uh, high ohmage resistors to measure the voltage on the secondary. The current transformer is there to measure the current on the secondary. And we have an adjustable gap here. Right now, it's set to 60 thousandths gap. And we got the coil here, and a little bit of information on a coil. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Uh, this one is of type 0, 221-604-109. That's the coil. That's a Bosch part number. And, and if you look at the coil, if you look at directly into the coil, this part here with the connector off, just look down into the coil, this is the pinout. On the left, which is the side with the little curvy side of the connector, it goes power ground, 5 volt trigger, that's a TTL trigger that you, you give it, every time you give the uh, trigger it pulses when, you like, when it rises back up. Uh, sensor ground and 12 volts, sorry about my big finger there. That's all you have to do to make the coil work, very simple. It's very similar to the other uh, uh, coils that have the electronics built into it. And we've got the same setup we've had before with the oscilloscope. We're going to look at the uh, secondary characteristics and a pulse generator. So let's turn it on. Very, 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 very nice waveform here. We have a one millisecond uh, charging time. That is the blue time, blue uh, waveform here. That's actually, that's actually a reflection onto the secondary, but that's the primary is actually charging up there of the coil. Then at this point is the actual discharge time, this discharge point. The yellow line is the current in the secondary where it builds up and then it, it ramps down. The blue line here is where the um, spark is actually initiating at this point here. Then you're having the discharge period of time as the current ramps down and then you kind of just go on from there. So the whole operational time is from here to here. And right now we have this thing running at one millisecond. And one thing I've kind of uh, forgot to mention in other videos and I needed to do and I may have to go back and correct them is we are running this at roughly 14 volts uh, if you change the battery voltage the the L over R which is the inductance over the resistance of the uh, primary circuit will change the current charge time on the primary so the dwells here correspond to roughly 14 volts battery voltage 13.8 volts to be very close um, which is very close to what you run with a uh, vehicle on a fully charged setup, so it's pretty accurate. I need to run these at different battery voltages to see what the correction you have to do to the dwell at lower battery voltages or how you shrink it up at higher voltages. In any event, right now we have one millisecond pulse, and what everybody's waiting for is to see if I increase the dwell time, which is the primary charge current time, what does that do to the secondary current, which is the yellow part, and where is an optimal dwelling time in milliseconds? So right now every uh, division is one millisecond, or major division. Uh, yes. So we're going to increase it from one, oh, overshot two. Notice that the yellow line, the current line, the, the discharge of the current, increased. There's one. See how it's littler? And two, as the cyan line got wider, the discharge, which is the yellow line, got larger. So we're at two milliseconds now. Let's take it to three. Three did an increase over two, as we can see. But as you notice, as we get longer dwells, we're going to go to four. Notice that the yellow line, which is the secondary current, hasn't changed. I can go to five and go further out or come back in, the yellow line doesn't really change. It's that three milliseconds seems to be the magic point. When I get below three milliseconds, things drop down. And as I come back up to three, 
if I put in a longer dwell, I don't get any more secondary current out, and all I'm really doing is heating up the electronics inside because it's got to, it, when it's what's doing there is throwing the, the uh, excess off as heat. So really, the optimal setting for this for this coil would be three milliseconds at that 14 volt battery voltage. Okay, well, last test is just to kind of ramp up the um, pulse frequency. Uh, people have asked about how does this relate to RPM, and it's not just a simple one-to-one. -one. A lot of this depends on how many cylinders you have, and if you're running wasted spark or running 720 degree spark. But the kind of the important thing to look for, you, for, the, for the whole period of opportunity is you have to turn the coil on here. You're dwelling it. Here's where it's actually firing, but then you discharge from here. So this period of time from here to here, you want to make sure you don't have another event coming from there. So that's going to kind of be your limiting uh, factor in your RPM. Um, to kind of point that out, we're going to increase, I'm sorry, if I keep messing with the dwell here, hit the right knob. Here we go. We're going to increase the pulse frequency. One thing to notice as I increase the pulse frequency, this distance here stays the same. I'm getting more pulses out, but the time it takes to, to dwell and the time it takes to discharge that's uh, the same amount. Faster. And we can see at the plug itself, it's really going at it there. Lots of sparks. I think that's about 40 hertz. And you notice this slow it down, speed it back up. Now we can go crazy with it. The scope starts losing lock here. But the point is the RPM, the upper RPM will depend on this period of time here. And for that it is one, two, three, four, five milliseconds, roughly five and a half, five and a half milliseconds for it to complete the whole thing. Now this time here will depend on your gap. If you have a wider gap it may shrink it, and if you have a, sh uh, a shorter gap, uh, the secondary voltage will fire, will fire sooner. Uh, it might just take longer to discharge. So uh, the gap will also have some influence on here. But for a 60,000 gap in air, combustion um, uh, pressures will change this as well. The, 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 the kick down voltage here, the, the, the arc over voltage. Uh, Five, six millivolt, six milliseconds seems to be the number to work on here. But anyway, quite very pleased with this ignition coil. Very, very, very good waveforms on the scope. And I think we've learned three milliseconds at 14 volts works.